And obviously this isn't quite ideal because it's also jittering the lids and all the various subcomponents of these jars. So how do we get this unpack USD to talk about just the jars as a whole whenever this goes to unpack? Well, this traversal is what you're looking for. It's saying, okay, at what level, what kind right here should it look at when it's trying to create these packed primitives? Instead of G prims, if we select components, it's now going to take a look at this component kind and consider this, which if we look here in the scene graph path, this is the object that it's going to form for every single point. So that's what you want right there. And that's in general what this traversal is talking about. Now, if let's say that you actually wanted to do an RBD sim to this and you need to work with polygons, you can change your geotype right here to polygons and that will take you to regular SOPs, regular polygons where you can do all your work. But anyway, now we have that. We have this point jitter going on. It's changing with every single frame. So as you can see, this is what we have. And uh, it's really not the best effect, but you know, it's just, uh, <laughs> it kind of gives you the, it gives you the, the general idea of points moving around. If I right click and we go to lop actions and we say inspect active layer, what we're saying is what is all the code that's happening with the SOP modify and this extract instances? Active layer means that it's not going to go above this layer break. So that's how you know that that's the active layer. And uh, like I said, this represents basically a matrix being applied to each one of these components. And th this is exactly what we see right here. Instance 91, we have a matrix, it gets applied, and so on and so forth for every single one of these things. This is the code that we'd like to save out in USD. So in order to create a path for saving out this code, we need to again create a layer or a configure layer right here check on the save path, and then I'll just browse for something, this hip tutorial one effects, you know, you could place this wherever you like, wherever your pipeline dictates. Let's just call this our effects contribution dot USD. And now we basically have everything set up to be saved out properly. Now, before we save that out, let's see what happens when we try to layer this on top of the original layout. So let's create a sub layer right here, plug in the original layout sub layer, and then on the second input, we'll take all of our changes. On the sub layer node itself, we need to tell the sub layer node to listen to the second input. So we could say sub layer type, sub layer inputs, that means use this guy. And now, as you can see, we have just these jars being jittered around. And it'll take a pretty good minute for everything to load for every single frame. But as you could tell, this is generally working. Our effects is being applied like so. Now let's quickly talk about saving this out because this gets a little bit complicated and it's not very straightforward. This sub layer here, Look at this, we have two layers, okay? Over in this side, we have five layers. And if we go to the scene graph layers panel right here, we can see what these layers are. So if I highlight this and we go root layer, this is everything which is existing within that layer. And so here we have the prune, we have the hide instances, we have all kinds of things set. And that is, again, five layers. Now, that's kind of interesting because we just said, hey, layer break, why do we have prunes going through there? Well, on this configure layer, we need to say with this flatten input, flatten input layers. And now we've essentially taken everything down to one layer. Uh, it's going to give us an error here that says some layers were stripped during flattening due to a layer break. So now this configure layer is listening to 
the layer break. In other words, it's not including this prune. And the reason why our viewport went blank like this is because now the only information that it's reading is the information which is applicable to the transform. So inspect active layer, the only information those layers are looking at exists here with those transforms. So now that we've done that, we need to just save out this transform information as its own USD, and then that becomes the effects layer that gets sent into the final scene assembly. So let's create a USD ROP, and there's another gotcha with this as well. Plug that into just this stream, only the effects information that we want. For the output file, I'm going to make this the same exact thing as what we have in the save path. So we just want, you know, that one save path, that's it. So paste routes of references. And right away, if I saved disk, and let's go find that file. As you can see, it's one kilobyte, it didn't really write anything out. We don't have that information being saved out. So, this is the gotcha. Under the save style, you need to say flatten all layers. Collapse all sublayers, preserve references, right there. Now, if we save to disk, what you'll find is that we've now populated this USD file. We have 89 kilobytes, or yeah, 89 kilobytes. And then if we now bring in a sublayer and we read this from disk, so we say right there, and we plug that into layouts. This can now be, let's say, effects contribution. As you can see, we now have whatever effects did being applied to the scene after layout. So, I know that's a lot of stuff. It's mainly knowing how to flatten things before you save out. So just keep that in mind as you're saving out. Always double check your work by the end of the day because this stuff is easy to mess up. So, just be sure that you have a sublayer. At the end of the day, you have all the information you need to include your contribution to the pipeline. All right, and that's that. In the next video, we're going to be finishing everything up by going through a lighting scenario. I'll talk about what some of these other buttons do, and we will call it at that.